Hi, welcome to my channel and another video featuring the capabilities of the Arduino Uno. So if you saw the last experiment, you might have said to yourself, seems like we're making this a lot more complicated than it needs to be and we could probably accomplish the same thing without the Arduino. It's just a momentary switch and we're turning the motor on and off. Why do we need a microcontroller? So here's a circuit that gives us the ability to turn the motor on and off with the same momentary switch but without the Arduino. We've got two 100k ohm resistors forming a voltage divider and we roughly apply 4.7 volts to the gate turning on this MOSFET which then allows current to flow through the motor turning it on. So here's the circuit without the Arduino and you can see here we're accomplishing the same thing with the momentary switch. We've got 4.5 volts being applied to the gate there, turning that MOSFET on. So why use the Arduino? Well, what if we want to add some more features? You can see here it's a momentary switch, so when I remove my finger, the motor stops. Well, what if we want the motor to stay on when we press it once and then have the ability to turn it off when we press the exact same switch again. And with this circuit we can only go in one direction. What if we want to be able to change direction? Let's see that's going clockwise. We could just go in and reverse these leads. That's not too practical. And now we're going counterclockwise. And what if we want to add a potentiometer and also control the speed? That's what the Arduino can bring to the table. It can help us add those features. So even though we're able to turn the motor on and off without the Arduino, the Arduino is going to help us add the more practical on and off switch in addition to variable speed and the ability to change the direction the motor spins in. So let's take a look at how we're going to accomplish that. So I used that Fritzing program for the first time and created this schematic here or uh, pictorial showing the physical parts and how they're going to be wired together on the breadboard. And I've got the schematic also. Here's the schematic. It came out kind of light. I don't know if you can see that. But besides the microcontroller, the major component that's going to give us the ability to change direction and uh, turn the motor on and off and also help us with uh, variable speed is this H-bridge. Here's the data sheet for it. And you can see here it's an L293D. It's a quadruple high current half H driver. And it's designed to provide bi directional drive currents up to 1 amp at voltages of 4.5 to 36 volts. And we've got the uh, 18 pin dip uh, IC that we're using. And on the, on the data sheet here in the back they have the functions, sort of like a, a truth table. And we have an enable pin. If it's high, if we have these logic levels on 1A and 2A, we can turn right, turn left, fast motor stop, And you can see here, uh, pin one is enabled. We've got uh, we're going to use pin two, which is one A, and also pin seven, which is two A. And we've got VCC and the ground pins. So let's take a look at the completed circuit real quick before we get into the program. So here's the circuit all wired up. I've uploaded the sketch and the power's on, but notice nothing's on. So if I press this on off button once,
the mode is on and I do not have to keep my finger on that button. I press it again, it's off. And here, this is the button that changes direction. Slow this down, I can control the speed. It's a little touchy, it doesn't seat in the breadboard properly. I press this button, you can see it turn direction. So let's take take a look at the program and how uh, the program works. Okay, let's go over the program now. There's a lot going on here. First, we have six constant integer variables we're going to declare. We've got control pin 1, which is pin 2 on the Arduino, and that's connected to pin 7 on the H-bridge. We've got control pin 2, which is pin 3 on the Arduino, and that gets connected to pin 2 on the H-bridge. We've got uh, enable pin, which is pin 9 on the Arduino, and that gets connected to pin 1 on the H bridge. And if we look here, let's see, we've got pin 1 is the enable pin, and pin 2 is 1A, and what did I say, pin 1 here. And pin 7. Pin 7 is 2A. And we'll look here on this truth table. These are the these are the pins that will control the direction of the motor. So depending on a low or a high on 1A or 2A, it'll turn right or turn left. In addition, we have to have a signal. Uh, an enable signal on pin 1 and that'll determine uh, that'll enable it to go left or right so next we've got direction switch pin is pin 4 on the uh, microcontroller on the Arduino and that's monitoring the toggle switch for a direction change we've got on off switch state switch pin pin 5 and that's monitoring the uh, momentary switch there for uh, on off and uh, A0 is an input so pot pin uh, is A0 on the microcontroller and that's monitoring the uh, wiper arm of the potentiometer it's monitoring the variable voltage Next we create some variables to hold input values from the on-off switch, the direction switch, the potentiometer. So uh, we want to initialize a lot of these to zero because if you notice when we first turn the circuit on nothing happens. We don't want anything to be happening. So we have the uh, variable on-off switch state equal to zero is the current state of the on-off switch. We've got the uh, previous on-off switch state equals zero. It's the previous position of the on-off switch. We have a variable direction switch state equal to zero. These are all integer values or integer variables. Current state of the, the direction switch. We have zero. And we have a variable for previous direction switch state, which we're initializing to 0, 2. And we have the integer variable motor enabled equal to 0. Turns the motor on and off, so we're initializing that to 0. And motor speed variable equal to 0. Speed of motor. So we're initializing these to 0, so nothing's happening when we first turn the circuit on. Integer motor direction variable equal to 1. So we pick 1, I guess, because it has to be 0 or 1. And we're 
choosing the value as 1 to start off with. Next we're calling the setup function and we're going to initialize our input and outputs. So we're using pin mode and switch direction switch pin is an input on off switch state switch pin is an input control pin 1 going to the H bridge that's an output control pin 2 going to the H bridge is an output and the enable pin going to the H bridge is an output next we're starting off by making the enable pin low so the motor does not turn on so we digital write enable pin low Next we start a loop function and this is where we're going to start comparing previous states of the on off switch, the direction switch, to the current states. So we do a digital read of the current state of the on off switch and put it into variable on off switch state. We have a delay of one millisecond. Then we have uh, a digital read of direction switch state and that value gets that value gets stored in direction switch state. Next we're going to read the value on A0 from the potentiometer and we have to divide that by 4 to get a usable number that we use for the uh, pulse width modulation value. So we do an analog read on pot pin divide by 4 and store that value in motor speed variable. The next part of the program is where we check to see whether the on off button has been pressed or whether the uh, direction button has been pressed and what action to take based on previous save states for those two buttons. So here we have uh, we're checking to see if the on off switch has been pressed so we compare it to the previous on off switch state so if on off switch state current on off switch state does not equal to the previous on off switch state and if on off switch state is already high we want to take uh, the variable motor enabled and invert it and put the new value back in motor enabled so this is the the pin that turns uh, the motor on and off on the H bridge. Next we do the same thing for the direction button. We check the current direction switch state, compare that to the previous direction switch state, and if they're different and if the direction switch state is high we invert the value in motor direction. So whatever value is currently in motor direction gets inverted and stored in motor direction. Then based on that value in motor direction we check to see if that value is equal to 1. If it is we digital write control pin high control pin 1 high and we digital write control pin 2 low. If it is not equal to 1, we do this else statement and we do the opposite. We set control pin 1 to low and control pin 2 to high to reverse direction. The next part of the program controls the speed of the motor. So we check to see if motor enabled is equal to 1. So if there's a 1 on pin 1 on the H bridge it's enabled and then we can return a pulse width modulated signal so we'll do an analog write and we got two arguments here we've got the pin and the variable with the value in it so enable pin is pin 9 and motor speed is a calculated value from the analog read that we did earlier so we did an analog read on A0 divided by 4 that returns a usable value for pulse width modulation into the variable motor speed. If that pin is not enabled then the motor is off. So if the motor is off we just do an analog write with the value 0. 
with no pulse width modulation. And last, we have to reinitialize all the previous states equal to the current state. So the current state becomes the new previous state. And that applies for previous direction switch state and also previous on off switch state. And that's the program. So I hope you found this experiment informative and interesting. Please subscribe and no comment. And thanks for watching. So this pinwheel is from the last experiment. You were supposed to put it together and attach it to the motor and just turn it on and off. I really didn't use it, but maybe I can put it to another use. Look into the pinwheel. You will subscribe and or comment. You will subscribe and or comment.